actually. That's okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to Podnuts. My name is Door to Door Geek, aka Steve McLaughlin. Uh, this is the uh, tech podcast where we try to talk about sites, services, solutions, products, uh, and uh, everything a tech need or could use to get their job done on any given day. And I've never in my life found a single source that should be able to help a tech with nearly anything they could possibly imagine except how to cook better bacon. <laughs> and uh, that site is called gegeek.com. And I have the site's uh, creator on the show, Mike. Uh, how's everything going, Mike? Uh, pretty good, Steve. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem, man. Um, I honestly cannot remember... Now, who it was, somebody like three weeks ago shot me a link and said, hey, man, you, you got to check this out. And as soon as I saw it, my ADHD flared up, let's say, <laughs> because, well, no, here, ready? That's not the kicker. Because I got to a page where on the left side, there's a folder structure like a file browser window with folders and pictures and labels. <laughs> and then to the right is a nice itemized list view with color-coded headers for super easy, quick category categorization and um, clarity. So I knew and understood what was going on immediately when I saw the site. But then when I figured out, wait, 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 I'm only on the very top of that tree on the left-hand side. I have all these different pages to go through of all this different content to go through. I literally said, now wait, I'm going to need at least three weeks to go through this site before I have Mike on the show. <laughs> and like, I went through like a third of it, but I really just wanted to first ask you, how did you get involved in computers? Because what I see on this website is a very wide, vast um, plethora of information and range of information. So how did you get involved in computers? Uh, well, I, I, originally, I originally knew that computers uh, interested me, and I went to school for my uh, electronics technician certification, got out of there and got a job uh, with a small, uh, uh, small franchise place, a little computer shop, and it was everything I dreamed of. I really loved it. I got into it, and I was, I was enjoying myself, but I quickly was doing everything that the shop needed me to do, and I wanted to do more. So I started investigating uh, other possibilities. I started applying to other jobs, bigger companies, and I was always given the same answer. Uh, you know, Mike, I'm sure you could do it, but uh, we need a degree, not just a certification. So that's what I did. I went back to school, got my Bachelor's of Science in Electronic Engineering, and that was another dream come, come true because we took the 8088 processor, we were playing with assembly language programming, and we were doing a little modem and little printouts and little LEDs, and I was, I was in heaven. I really, I really thought that was going to be the way to go. Finished up, got good grades, and sent out my resume, and then all of a sudden GE Medical Systems contacts me for a job. Oh, wow. And I, I sort of was like, well, I wanted to get into the computer field. They made me an offer. Money-wise, I just couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. Well, and you are in Jersey, so I guess it makes sense. Exactly. And I ended up being an x-ray field engineer for them uh, for 15 years. And I loved it. It was a great job. GE's a great company, and I had a great time. Uh, we did have laptops, and I did teach a few courses. If you want to believe it, I taught a course on DOS and PKZip, if you remember that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, so I was still involved, and then about 12 years ago, there was a product uh, 
that was pretty much sweeping the country and, and pretty much the world. Every hospital had to have it. It was called a PACS system, P-A-C-S. It hmm. stands for Picture Archiving and Communication Systems. Ah. And basically, in uh, Reader's Digest version, what we do is we take your old mom and pop x-ray films that you would get from your x-ray or CT that the doctor used to put up on the, on the, the view box. Well, what we do is we digitize those. We send them now to storage on a NAS or a SAN for the site. And then uh, what we do is we save that for the hospital. The doctor then goes to a high-powered workstation, which uh, typically has very high resolution and uh, usually multiple monitors. And he'll call up your images. And from that workstation, he can do... Uh, post image manipulation and he can cr create 3d objects he can he can make measurements and all the time he's dictating into a system his findings and those findings are set, saved in the, in the pack system as an audio file and mm. and the referring doctor that sent you to the to the uh, hospital for the x-ray can then log into a web server and actually read the report and view the images and these images are kept indefinitely uh, on, on, the, on the hospital system uh, you know the PAX hospital system so and this can all happen in literally you know in, in some cases a couple of hours two or three hours gotcha yeah that sounds like very high-end um well, so now I, I see I see this is sweeping the country, and I'm doing X-ray at the time. So I said, this sounds like something I would love to do. So I said, I'm going to transfer from GE X-ray to over to GE PAX. So I'm still with GE, but um, I figured let me let me try my hand at PAX. It seems like it's right up the right up my alley. Well, to be honest, Steve, when I first came over, I was a little overwhelmed. Uh, the amount of equipment that's all pulled together to try and make a pack system work uh, pretty much left me in awe when I first went into packs I, I was I was hit with the Macintosh I, I saw Solaris systems running Unix uh, they had Microsoft SQL we we had Sybase I saw web servers print servers uh, regular Windows service that we use for you know uh, storage archiving uh, databases and also networking and there was a lot of information and I was wondering if, if I was in over my head but I, I love the challenge and I love the computer industry so I immediately started taking courses at night on Unix on Linux and networking and trying to do courses online and trying to keep all this information organized was right was a nightmare for me because like we were joking about before I I'm a little OCD like you and and the information was was all over the place I, I tried notebooks I I tried shareware uh, bookmarking systems and nothing really worked for me uh, so I got this database program I, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention names or anything yeah yeah yeah, yeah well I, I I tried like one node and a lot of document managers and PIMs out there but the one I settled on was treepad because I liked the, it was a flat file database system it allowed me to right. track everything on my job as well as keep all the bookmarks and the way you see the bookmarks right there on my website is the way it's stored on my on my database system and I just publish nice. it right right from there so it made it easy and you said before in the introduction you saw it all on one page it was very quick and easy to find things that's mm -hmm. what I that's what I was looking for I wanted everything on one page or, or one node of the tree where I could find things quickly and that was always my goal and I went through many revisions trying to find that one system that I thought would help me to locate things quickly when I need it because I, I I couldn't stand going to Google and getting six million hits and trying to mm -hmm. trying to find which site was trustworthy or, or not so whenever I found a site and I used that information and I thought it was good I saved it and then when I come to my web page and I and I look for it I know that site I've trusted it so I you know I know I can I can find the information quickly and 
that's what I've been doing for the last 12 years is trying to keep up all the information uh, that I've been responsible for on my job right. and just trying to keep it all organized and to be honest with you I still think it needs uh, some work in trying to organize some more things some things I have uh, I, I don't like the way it's situated so I, I'm constantly touching it I'm never happy with it well that's the key of um, being OCD is you're never satisfied there's never the end and I understand trust me um, yeah. and I can believe it would take someone that long to amass this type of information and dude the fact that you can just pull it from the database app and put it here and it's and it's the same type of format makes it gold absolutely um, yeah because the last thing you want to do is spend hours translating something from one format to a different one when it should be just you know publish it that I, that's exactly it. I was using I was using a document manager and then trying to publish it online and with front page, and that was just double the work. Right. Now I find a website and I could just enter it into my database. I hit publish and it's just up there. And the built-in search engine for TreePad I like much better. You know how a lot of websites have these, uh, you know, these Google searches. They can put the custom Google search, and I I don't know. I never had I never never had a lot of luck using those Google searches on sites but when I use the built-in the built-in search from TreePad which you'll see on the very bottom of the page there I have a lot of success with that I like that search engine a lot better gotcha yeah I can definitely understand what you mean um, site search it is um, a little bit black magic a little bit voodoo to get it to work on your own on a site that doesn't have it built in That's right to have it already built in on the site is just, you know, it's like getting uh, getting some free um, beer. I mean, you can't pass it up. It's free yeah, beer. Exactly. Yeah, this is the search engine that the TreePad database uses. And when it publishes, you, can, you have the option to take the search engine with its results and put it online. Dude, that is really good. You said that's called TreePad because I'm going to have to definitely make a note of that. Yeah, TreePad. Very cool. Um, um now I've got to ask you real quick. We need to at least go over some of the categories on this site because, I mean, we could literally go over I think one category and it would be an entire show. There's so much information here, Mike. <laughs> so, I mean, is there any one or two categories that, when, when you had this list finally done, you you said I cannot believe I found these things. Well, I love my antivirus malware tab, the first one down mm -hmm. on, the, on the left. I, I've worked hard on that one. Uh, that, that's a big issue today with people. I mean, uh, malware is becoming very sophisticated and, and harder and harder to clean. And uh, it, it's not like the old days, you know, trying to clean a machine. Today, sometimes uh, even the pros have to format a drive. And having all these tools out here, uh, trying to, you know, trying to see which one can help me get rid of a virus uh, is gold to me to have these all here. So I worked hard on this page to make sure that if I was working on a problem, that one of these tools or one of these sites would have information that would help me. Right. And I cannot believe you have in this categorized list links directly to command line switches for spybot AVG yeah. Viper Ka, Spursky McAfee malware by Sentinel Pro because I know because I'm like you I think I've been around computers so long you know what's this what's this Windows thing you're talking about um, command line switches are the way to automate things number one but it's also a way to get things done where if the GUI is either broken or taking too long or slow or you get a solid white box mm -hmm. these command line switches are ways you can trick or command the application to do things without clicking a button yeah absolutely yeah I, I thought that was good to have I mean anything that I ran into that I thought I would need again one day uh, I put it up here. I, I'm not saying I always went back to it, but if I found it useful or if I read about it and I said, this is interesting, one day, you know, I may need this. I'm going to put it in my tool bag. And this is my tool bag, my right. website. So, 
You know, you never know. I, I know, get... and I'm, man, the, 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 I mean, the stuff I'm seeing listed here literally is tickling me. It's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm like seeing um, um, Java Raw, which is an application I love because it just annihilates Java. Um, Virus Total, I've used in the past more than a couple times to verify. Yeah. It, is this file actually infected? And, you know, it, it easy makes it. It makes it very easy to find out, you know, if it is infected or if it isn't infected. Auto runs, process monitor, process explorer, uh, hijack this. I mean, you have so much stuff here. It is, it is, gr and great. And I will say the one part of this section that I'm super happy isn't small is the number of rootkit scanners. Yeah. A, a lot of people think they have to believe on another tool that can find viruses and malware and rootkits when sometimes you really do need a, um, a Dedic app with a laser focus. Yep, dedicated, dedicated rootkit scanners. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right, and that's becoming a big problem today too. A lot of people don't even know they're infected with them. Just had a call yesterday from my father-in-law while I was at work that said, I got this message on my screen. It says it's from the FBI, but I don't think it's really from the FBI. <laughs> They're asking for $300. I just threw my head into my hand and said, uh, yeah. But, but I will honestly say this. I'm not really actively in the game of cleaning computers. I was, and a lot of things I know, but I forgot a lot of things. Coming to this site, it reinforces to me, ah, yeah, oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that. I remember that. It's, I remember that. that. That's the goal. That's the goal. Because when you're, when you're an IT guy in, in today's age, there's just too much information to know. And someone talks to you about, for instance, uh, prevention You over there to the right. And... You have a couple of things in mind, you know, like, well, they'll say, how can I, how can I protect my machine? And you have a couple of things in mind and you talk about it with them. But then if you come here, you'll, some things will jog your memory. Mm -hmm. You go, oh, yeah, I know about the, oh, yeah, sandboxing, virtual box. You know, there's a couple of different things we can do. Tool time freeze. You know, there's a couple of different things and it'll give you more options and, and, and it just seems you're better prepared, you know, because Here's the list. I can I can pick and choose and match it to the to the user. Exactly. Yeah. Because um, uh, the one thing I didn't like when I first was getting into this podcasting community aspect of computer repair is we would always have texts come in and just wanted to know, okay, what are your master tools that you use to get everything done? And it's like, yeah. well, it, well, there isn't like a master one. You gotta look at it. You gotta recognize. You gotta determine and then you know what tool to go with you don't just there's no master tool absolutely and and and, and that's what this page that's what this page says to the person who comes here exactly dude if i knew of this page i would have just said <laughs> Where, what's the master tool it's gegeek.com now get away <laughs> thanks well you know this also comes in handy for me if i'm going to if i'm working with somebody remote a friend and you know this is a, a friend fix i'm not it's not a customer or anything and and i'll just tell them yeah, go to this page read this there's a couple tools there you know do a little bit of homework because you notice i don't put explanations if right. if, a, if a newbie would come to this page he wouldn't know half the stuff is here but I just recently had a, an issue with a newbie I was trying to help him and I go you know you gotta come to the page you gotta start clicking on links gotta start reading gotta see what each of the tools what you know what each tool does I there they have a highlighted topic you know mm -hmm. I mean so pick out pick out a tool read it pick out a couple tools and see which one you like you know anyone would, would work for you Right, and to be honest, I love on the bottom of that page, you have uh, malware articles I found worth saving. See, it's, yeah. one, it's one thing to have listings of curated tools, because anybody can just put a list up. But to have somebody actually curate the list, that's a plus. To have somebody actually curate a list of articles talking about malware on top of applications 
is just another huge plus because there's too many articles out there for me as an individual to go out there and read on my own. Yeah. I saw this and I was like, dude, <laughs> uh, time to get to well, you, some reading. You, you have to remember when I when I originally designed this page, I, I thought I would. I would kill two birds at one stone. I'd put all this information up, and, and then I'd, maybe I'd make some money. Well, after about three years, you could count the number of people that came to my site on, on, on one hand. N nobody came. So when I was designing all of this and putting this all up there, I thought I was just doing this for me. That's, right. why, that's why it says articles I found worth saving. Yeah. yeah, well, I'd say the best things in the world that have been invented were to – were – Something somebody invented to relieve their own itch, scratch your own itch. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it ironic? I was trying to satisfy the masses out there, and, and I was putting designs up there that I thought other people would like. And then when I got away from that and just went OCD and did it my way, mm. <laughs> then everybody liked it. Right, so. and and dude, I'm going to say alone. This one little segment alone in here yeah. is, an, is enough to probably answer. 10% of the communications I get over a year, which is I need to get uh, anti, I um, need to get viruses and malware. I need to test this quote unquote out. Where do I go? And yeah. to which I usually amp, I usually answer, go to Facebook, start accepting friend requests. And click <laughs> and say, I don't know. And you, have th and you have three links in here I could give somebody. Yeah, you just go there and register, and they'll give you access to a small sample. You know, uh, right. you can download, you know, like 50 of them or something like that. You just, I don't know, I think you sign an agreement. I don't even know if I read it or not. Right. Yeah, that, and, and that's cool. And trust me when I say, I really do understand what you mean by that is your favorite tab because that's probably the most changing tab that you need to a keep up on but at the same token it has the most um possibilities of tools because you know just like um the um malware rescue CDs which I became infatuated with a while ago all the different ones and how to make multi boot and put them up, put a whole bunch of them on there yeah you know like Trisky uh Trinity rescue kit when I first found out that could run like six or seven AVs at once kind of thing yep oh, 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 oh you know and it's outside of the infected operating system yeah I was like dude this is like genius and then I went Rescue CD crazy for a while, and you got right here a list of more than a couple good ones. I see, and you have a big list of rescue CD <laughs> and a and a link to twenty six bootable CDs. <laughs> yeah, someone did someone did a good job. I like the way he laid out his list, so I'll put it there. If if you click on it, it's probably easy to see. Yeah, see, he had a nice list there. Oh yeah, that's uh the one link goes to uh Technable, which Technible, is uh, yeah. which is uh Bryce who's a hell of a good guy. And this yeah. posting was by him himself. And I'll say when Bryce decides to do something, he typically decides to completely own it. So, yeah, and and if you notice, I, I link right to the person's site. I try not to and I try not to take anything from the site. He's put up a great list and that's all I need to put. List of twenty six bootable CDs. And then when I go there, it's still it's still very quick for me to locate the information. I didn't have to put it on my website. Right. Well, and I'll say that is the kind of thing that uh you'll never get thanked about it, but Anyone who creates content who sees you put just a direct link thanks you. Thanks you a lot, in fact. Because it's so easy to just go to the page, hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then go and say, Look what I did. Yeah. Um, so to give other people clicks, traffic uh, is always a good thing. And the other one goes to Raymond CC. Raymond CC was the first place I remember I found out about. Um, Stephen Gould's cleanup. Uh, that was one of the first temp cache cleaners I found that could do all of the users on a Windows box with one click. I think I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, the, the main reason I remember that one was I had to remind myself when I run it remotely on a customer's computer to disable the audio or else the customer would hear a toilet flush. 
<laughs> when I seen them. Because I got stung by that a couple times where they said, um, why do I hear a toilet sound coming out of my computer? Oh, um, yeah, that's me. You know, also, if you want to look at the top where you see it says antivirus videos, mm -hmm. uh, there's another great tech out there. Uh, uh, he puts out great videos. Is uh, Bry Tech? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know Bry Tech. Okay, well, I, I put links to, he, he does very specific uh, videos on removing certain viruses. Mm -hmm. So now, if you just do like a control F for this page right. to search, you can find whatever you're looking for easy. You know? Fantastic. You know, and that, that's the way I do my searches. I, I come to this page, I do control F, and I had to put it up on the top to remind me and everybody else, control, <laughs> control F. And you, you type in Trojan and you, you'll find every every video dealing with a Trojan. Right. Yeah, um, Brytech was on a show before. Brytech was on um, Tech, um, Tech Chat Show podcast for a while. He was in the Podnuts um, voice chat server for a while. Podnuts knows Brytech very well, and the one thing I can tell you, this guy has so much experience Really? Removing infections by hand. And this guy, literally, he gets infections before anyone else does. And what I mean by that is he gets access to infections. You know, somebody says, I just got infected. I don't know what it is. And, and he will say, well, let me remote into the computer. I'll show you if I can fix it for you. <laughs> and at the same time, he will document it. He will take it. He will isolate it. He will send it to himself. Uh, I think he does quality videos, and I'm very impressed with the way he goes through and shows people how to remove these videos. And as you can see, I put his name on each one by Brytech, by mm -hmm. Brytech. I, you know, I don't take credit for it, but when I'm in a when I'm in a situation and I got one of those those ransomware or FBI right. things, and I type in a search for the name, I might find it here, and it could save me a lot of time. And that's what this is all about, you know, just trying to save time. Right there, you go. I mean, right there, because my father-in-law. Remove FBI ransom, FBI there you money go. pack. I mean, you can't get more direct than that. That's that. See, and you found that in, in less than five seconds, and that's what right. it's all. That's what it's all about. Yeah, because if I went to YouTube and just did a search, the way they do their search, I don't know what the heck I would have found. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. See, and I've already. And when he comes out with these videos, I I screen them all and I look at them, and I always pick up. You know, one or two things when he when he cleans these up, and uh, you know, who knows? Maybe there's a new location or a new way they affect the computer, and it's always good to have references to those because right. these these viruses are not going away. You you'll see viruses from three years ago. You know, they yeah. still show up. Yeah, gotcha. Man, that is really cool. I'm not gonna lie, I missed that link. I didn't see that link. I'll be honest with you, Mike. What the videos? I yeah, I didn't see the link to the videos. No, that's okay. I was very uh, in awe of these sections. There's a lot of stuff there. It's easy to miss. Well, yeah, and see, the one thing I want to really try to get through to people is gegeek.com is in no way your resource for viruses and malware and root kits and bright tech videos. Yeah. That is literally like 1%. Of the, of the website. I mean, we have a whole bunch of information here on hardware, um, HDD tools, uh, BIOS information, adapters for like DVI to VGA, VGA to DVI, CPU sockets, uh, CPU Z, which is an app I adore. I mean, how, how can you get so much information out of a program so small and so light is beyond me? Well, why don't you check out on the left-hand side the diagnostics and utilities? Because that's sort of my my little uh, my little pet project. I love utilities and diagnostic utilities. I can tell. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love I love having you little utilities to do everything. Oh my goodness! Well, um, uh, <laughs> I, I see you have like a whole bunch of HDD tune. HDD scan. Um, I just did a episode yesterday of uh, My Hard Drive Died with Scott Moulton. And uh, he's like the hard drive guy. I love when he mentions a hard drive application 
that I know and I've used in the past kind of thing. Yeah. Something tells me if I come here and look, I'll find probably like 90 to 95% of all the stuff that he mentions, even the stuff that costs way too much money for me to play with. Well, here, here's here's the point. When I have a hard drive issue, and, and let's say I'm working on it, and I had one or two tools, typically after the problem's gone, that's when I sit down when I have a clearer head and, and I have some time, and then I'm going to start searching the net. Was there a better tool out there I could have used? You know, and, and, and I'll start scanning for all the possible hard drive diagnostic programs out there that maybe were a better fit for this particular problem. Gotcha. Yeah, and like um, what I'm also getting from here is there's a whole lot of little one-off tweaks like host file fixing. Yeah. Host file fixing is one of the things that I think a lot of techs might accidentally overlook um, because it's so easy to. Yeah. You know, uh, and also I noticed in here S I S I W. That that's another tool I I I abused for. That's the best tool out there for information. Yeah, uh, BG Info. We use that at my uh, nine yep. to five. Uh, HDD Guru, dude. When I found that site, I literally downloaded. I think it was like four or five tools of that website, and I ran them on hard drives I owned, and I just kept running them on them till I, till I understood most of each application, and um, that's where I found the uh, MHDD32. I want to say. Okay. Yeah, I kind of, I don't know. Even though the guy now technically works for Seagate, there'll never be another update again. I found that to be, uh, I thought, a really, really cool tool. But man, on the diag diag diagnosis side, this is a whole lot of list. Yeah. Very cool. Core temp device doctor. I've used that one in the past. It's very yeah. cool. Oh, ben ben benchmarking. I used to use benchmarking tools incorrectly. I will admit th th this to you. I would get a computer where I thought something might have been going wrong. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what. Some some piece of hardware I think is failing. I would find the ben I would fi I would download a benchmarking tool and say full test and then just walk away. And if I came back and the computer wasn't working, yeah, there's a piece of hardware not working. <laughs> um, yeah. I found out very quickly thereafter, that's not what you're supposed to do. No. No, that wasn't very <laughs> smart of me. It's okay. This, these programs, they, they come in handy if, uh, if you have access to the same machine a lot, you know, same type of machine, you know, like 25 of the same machines and you want to benchmark one and it's a good comparison when you walk up to one of the other machines. You can easily say, well, I know this particular drive should be putting out this much or so forth. Right. Um, I also noticed you have um, tweaking apps on this. To me, to me, tweaking apps are almost misleading. Tell me if you think I'm right when I say this. Tweaking apps are like build as being the way that the geek can get his computer exactly how he wants. The way I almost see them is this is how I can make a computer easier for people to use, especially if it's like a public-facing computer or if it's a computer for someone who hates computers. I found with those tweak tools I can remove so much of the interface or change so much of the interface that I can simplify the computer down for them. Oh, yeah, abs absolutely. If you look over here to tweaking, you'll see my pick over there is for the simple system tweaker. And mm -hmm. basically what that does is it just sets up all the all the little uh, things that shouldn't be turned on in Windows just to speed Windows up. It turns on the verbose messaging when you're logging in. I like to see that. And it's just a little little quick thing you run, and it just... It just shuts off all the unnecessary stuff in Windows and makes it a little crisper, a little quicker. And I, I've had good success with that, and, and I pretty much run that on, on every machine. I like that a lot. Very cool, and I love the fact that it comes into a portable version. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really found that I relied on portable applications a whole lot, and I will say I noticed on the side you had a dedicated link for portable apps. Um, now, the question when asked about portable apps is, I wasn't aware that you could basically make certain applications portable even if they weren't intended to be portable. 
yes, some of them if they if they can use an INI file to read the configuration. Gotcha. Because what I did was I would I took an application called a Universal Extractor. Yeah, oh. I have that. Yeah, on the, I have that on my toolkit. Yeah. Yeah, it, I would either use that or I would actually use Sandbox IE for this thing. Because what I would do is I would either install it in Sandbox IE or if I could, I would use Universal Extractor, extract all of the content of the installer to a single folder. And I would try to combine DLL files in the same folder with the EXE files and things like that. And I found I could get a large percentage of applications to run as portable. Well, I, I think that's the new thing. In the last couple of years, I've seen more developers making uh, portable versions of their programs, and, and I love that. That's why I have this. That's why I made this tool. Well, that was one of the reasons, because normally, you know, we were joking before about my OCD. I mean, I would have all of these programs installed on my machine. Well, now, right. I, don't, now I don't have to. Now I could just put them on a portable drive, and, and they're all available to me, and I don't have to install them. Yeah, I'll say for you and me, portable apps are fantastic. For network admins and businesses, portable uh, apps can be the death of them. Yeah, they 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 try to they try to stop that. They shut down the you know they'll shut down the USB port or the CD-ROM drive or something. They don't want you doing that. Right. Yeah, and uh, I I'll say where I work, I understand why they do it, but sometimes I just need that application. Yeah. Well. You know. This was uh, well. This is part of the reason why I I created this this kit too. This is all all freebie stuff. Uh, you know, uh, it was a free menu launcher program, and all these programs, uh, the developers made them free. And really, there's twofold uh, reasons why I why I uh, made this toolkit. One, I didn't have mm -hmm. to install it on Windows, but the second reason, which really gave me the idea, was on my job. Uh, all of these devices are medical devices, and we're not allowed to install software unless it's validated by the FDA. The FDA right. controls controls all medical devices. So if I wanted to run a simple program on one of my servers, I couldn't because I would need my engineering department and software developers to validate it, send information that it was all documented and it's all safe, you know, to the FDA. So right. by by having all these tools on my my flash drive. I, I don't leave any footprint behind on the server. Gotcha. Well, let's just say I'm downloading this toolkit right now. It's pretty big. That's the problem. Like I said, I, I, I do this for me. I got good speed. So, you know, it's it's about 1.4 gig and expands to like about 2.5 or 2.6 6 gotcha. gig. It's, it's pretty big. But I love having everything on a flash drive. Well, I would say I don't mind waiting for good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah I um, hope it works out for you. Yeah, this is, I got to say, this is, honestly, Mike, I cannot, first off, I am, I have to make a part on podnuts.com, basically, um, friends of the network, something like that, on podnuts.com. And I will tell you right now, your URL, your domain, your content, your hand curation of all this stuff m makes m make m makes me say to myself, you have earned the right to be to be to be talked about and to have these links pushed out for your main domain. Because this is the kind of information I, I I love how when people email me and ask me questions. They literally think when I answer them, I knew what the answer was. 99% of the time, I don't know what the answer is to their question. I have to go to a resource of mine and, and search for it and look for it and dig for it. I think I'm really good at Google searching, I'll say. Okay. Your site makes it so I don't have to. There's an entire percentage of work now I do not have to do. Well, thank you. That, that, um, was, that was the goal. That was the goal. Yeah, and I will say um, on doordoorgeek.com right now it's dead. I gotta fix it. My old site, which is still buried within folder structures there somewhere, I have two people who every four or five months email me and say, "What's the link to your old domain?" I'm like, why? They say, "Well, because I need it." And what I and what happened? I found out was on the right hand side of my old domain, I had literally like eighty or so 
um, images, little images, and they were links to sites I thought were cool, some sites I found useful, sites that had good information, you know, that kind of thing, and they were using that as a resource jumping yeah. off point. Yeah. Both of those guys said to me, uh, uh, I hope you don't feel bad, but I don't think I need your domain anymore. I'm like, dude, I don't feel bad at all. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just really honestly happy something like this exists and that people are going to be able to just simply and easily come here, click one or two links, and be at a place answering a very solid part of a question they had at their mind, whether it be Windows error codes, whether it be a listing of temp cache cleaners for Windows 8, um, whether it be uh, information on um, Outlook, which let me tell you something, in my experience, computer uh, help desk support in an enterprise, Outlook is like its own continent. <laughs> exactly why I gave it its own damn. Right. I, you always have issues with it. And like I said, I, I was putting this stuff up, you know, off my experiences and, and I needed something like this. Yeah, that is very, very cool. Um, and I will encourage you, Mike, uh, very honestly, and even on the show, I will say if there is a way you find you think you can monetize anything in this site, you please let me know and I will do everything I can to help publicize the service or whatever because huh. I think you need to be rewarded somehow for the amount of content you've curated over the time. Um, uh, do you have a donate button anywhere on the website at least? No, actually I don't. I I, uh, I usually just tell people when they send me nice emails, I say thanks, that's my reward. You know, I, I had an email the other day uh, from a, a new tech. He's just, I, I think he was just you know, fairly new in the industry, and he he said, "Dude, you saved my IT life," <laughs> and I and it just made it just put a smile on my face. I said, "Oh wow, that was that was really great." You know, I I never really thought, like I said, I I literally did this for me, you know, to help me, and it right. it started catching on, and I'm I was I've been very surprised at that, and I haven't really thought about you know that end of it. I mean, obviously, I'm not opposed to it. I would, I would consider it, you know. But uh, I don't want to take away from my my page layout and being able to find things quickly. I don't, because I think that's one of the quick ways to destroy a, a web page. Because I know sometimes I, you've experienced this too. You've gone to a site and you see a great article, you want to read it, but they break it up into nine pages, and you got to click on every page to read the entire article. Yeah, you know, things that, like uh, that. I found a Chrome plugin that recognizes the page did that, and I basically just, when I get to where it says click here for page two, I just on my keyboard, because my hands are always on my keyboard, I hit end key, and it automatically goes to the next page. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that baby. But um, here's the kind of thing that I get questions on that I can't answer the person without sitting them down for a 90-minute session of teaching someone, okay? Exactly. Yeah. There's there there there's a link on um, multi boot tab. Okay. Create your own re um re restore partition. Yeah. Um. Just like HP Dell does for their laptops, and there's four parts, and that's because each part is linking to uh, screencast dot uh, com, where somebody inside of a uh, Windows VM shows you how to create a restore partition. Dude. I know. That that alone, if for anyone getting into the business, if they can make their own restore partitions, the amount of if they don't realize the amount of time they can save because of doing that, it's really quick. You know what I mean? Then, exactly. You know, they're gonna be spending so much time spinning their wheels on the job. Yeah, I, I, I find something like that, and it's bookmarked, and I know it's there. So in the future, you know, like you said, if someone asks me, I'll go right here. Just watch the video. Saves a lot of time. I don't have to answer a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. trust me. I absolutely understand that. Um, 
Okay, I was going to do a quick advert here, uh, and I will say I love the fact that I'm doing an advertisement for someone that you already have listed on your um, website, and uh, I believe it's on the malware section. Um, I know. Dick, yeah. Nick, uh, Nick Shaw? Yeah, Nick Shaw from uh, yeah. 87. So here's my question, to, I, and, and please don't feel forced to answer this. But my question is, have you had, how much experience have you had with that tool, and what would you honestly say about it? Uh, I got onto the tool early. He was in version 6, I think, at the time. And he makes an incredible, he does an incredible amount of work in that tool trying to automate everything as far as the technician, technician work goes. Uh, I like the tool. I do. I think his goal is to have a totally automated program where a tech will go in, hit a button, it'll start, you know, working on the malware or the maintenance, and the tech will go to another machine. Because I know Nick was always talking about when he worked in the in the repair shops that people would be sitting there watching the hourglass. And he goes, you know, and he used to write programs, little batch files, say, look, hit this program, run it, then go do another another computer while this one's running. So. His goal is to get that totally automated program. And I know I've set up a couple of routines where, like on his maintenance page, you have a whole bunch of items you can pick. I select all of, all, all of the ones I typically run. I save it as a profile. I hit a button. I can literally go away and get a cup of coffee for 15 minutes. When I come back, everything is clean. So I, I think he's, his, his, uh, his work that he's putting on this program is amazing, and I think one day this program is going to be the de facto standard for every tech out there. Yeah, I feel safe in saying it's grown in popularity probably five-fold since I first heard about it from other techs. Um, and I will say, I, I will tell people, this is not a tool you buy, you download, and you click one button, and it does everything for you. Right. Think of it as cooking, okay? You have to, A, know and understand the computer, okay? Just like you have to know and understand the food you're dealing with. Two, you have to understand what a recipe is. You have to understand ingredients, how to add them, when to add them, how long to cook it. In D7, if you put the time into the configuration of the application, you can have that application that you open up and click one button and out pops a fully cooked turkey. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes, but you do have to put the time into the application. There is no perfect download by click one button, everything's fixed. It's funny you, you, it's funny you mention that because, uh, of course, I'm on the D7 forum, and uh, Nick and I were just having this conversation the other day, and and we were talking about some of those little utilities that you saw that do simple things, you mm -hmm. know. And the end user feels very comfortable just getting that one little tool and running that little tool, and it does and it does what it needs to do. And like I told Nick, I said I would never send that person to your site to download your program. I would send them to another site to download just one of those little utilities, you know, just that does that specific thing that they're looking for, you know, and he agreed, you know, his tool is not for the average, right. the average user, it's for text, and that's the way he's designing it, so yeah, I agree, you, you need to know a little bit about the inner workings before you use his program. Yeah, um, you know, and it's like a auto mechanic knows and understands his tool and knows and understands the car that he's working on just because I can walk into his shop and pick up his tools doesn't mean I should. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 what I mean by that is this tool is for anyone with a little bit of knowledge. And and from a site like gegeek.com, that knowledge is freely available to you, okay? And to the new to the newer techs out there, I encourage you download a evaluation copy, a free copy of D7. Mm. See what's possible. Then spend time on sites like gegeek.com, listen to old Podnuts episodes, let, and go to sites like TechNibble, watch videos like Brightex videos, yeah. learn the game. When you learn the game, you will be able to take an application like D7 and you will be a digital ninja. <laughs> I can promise you that because I've seen, I've seen advanced D7 setups. Mm-hmm. 
blows my mind the kind of stuff these people have these tools doing and in such a way and not to mention Nick's other tools are just as remarkable in my humble opinion and I ask people who are listening to the show please don't forget Go to FoolishIT.com. If you decide to buy, do not forget the code PODNUTSHOW20. You will save 20% off of D7. And the final thing I'll say about that tool is D7. Automate, relax, get paid. (laughs) Yeah, that's his motto. And and, and it's true. And if you do download the tool, you can always go to the forum and uh, you can always do a search because all of us, when we were growing up with the tool along with Nick, we had issues and we always put our questions up there. And Nick is very good at getting back with the answers and, and you could learn. And so if you get up there and say, yeah, I'm a newbie, I'm just trying this, uh, a lot of guys will just point you to the right direction. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, that, I think, is one of the best things about that application. And some people might hate me for saying this. That application almost has the community of like a Linux distribution in the fact of its users love to conversate among each other and help each other in such a way that I don't know of any other Windows based application that has that type of um, community. Maybe yeah. it's me. No, I, I, I never really thought of it that way, but you're right. It is a, it is a more pigeonholed. Uh, forum. Uh, it's it's all about D7. We, I mean, we do get other discussions on there from time to time, and somebody will get a malware problem, and and like I said before at the beginning, sometimes you get a malware, uh, you know, piece of malware on your machine, and no one can clean it. You're going to have to format. It. Just there isn't a tool, or you, the guy just wrote an incredible program. You just can't beat it. But you know, everybody's out there discussing, and and you know the information you're getting from all these guys that are on the forum, uh, they know what they're talking about, yeah. you know, because they're they're all experienced. So, so yeah. it, it's helpful. Yeah, that's the thing that I like about the tool is, um, uh, the majority of people that use it know a heck of a lot more about computers than me. So it's the kind of place where I would shut my mouth and just listen. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you get that feeling a couple times when some people start talking and go, "I have no idea what he's talking about." I'll just <laughs> I'll just I'll just read this one and maybe I can learn from it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, now I click on the tab on the left hand side. My my software twenty thirteen. Okay, that software that when I run across it and I'm interested and I try it. And if I liked it, but I don't really have a use for it right at this moment, or I just don't want to install it right at this time, but I really think it's got a place somewhere in the IT world, I'll I'll make a note of it, you know, and I'll copy a quick, you know, thing, uh, you know, a quick little uh, excerpt from the site of just exactly what it does. Gotcha. Well, there's one piece of software on this list that yeah. I'm not going to lie, as a Linux guy, catches my eye that you have in this list, okay? Which one is that? And that is Chocolatey. Really? Yes, because it's basically like sudo apt git for Windows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Now, see, that that's one of those typical things. I, I was interested, you know, when I read it. I didn't really try it, but I said, I'm going to keep this. You know, I'm, right. this is something I might I might want to play with someday. Well, yeah, and, and to be honest, this is the kind of tool I honestly do not see myself ever using, hands-on using. But I can see people making really simplified GUI interfaces or batch files to automate a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, that It's a GUI world we live in, right? Uh, well, if speed is the issue... We need GUI, you know what yeah. I mean. Um, and I and I w- will say I am happy to see this tool is getting updated. Uh, I first saw this tool maybe a year ago or so, and I really thought to myself, it's either going to catch popularity or die hard and quick. Mm. And I'm happy to say, at, at least on their website now, they have six hundred and eighty-three thousand total downloads with 1116 unique packages you can install from this tool so what that means to me 
if I really wanted to make an after install batch mm -hmm. tool, Chocolaty should be able to get me a large percentage of the way towards a complete computer. So if I had to do a lot of reinstalls, especially for like a business, where they needed these certain sets of applications on all their computers, Chocolaty is the kind of tool I would use because it's much more versatile than just a um, Nine Night or something like that. Right. I'll I'll look through these lists a couple times when you got a slow day and you're you're interested in a project. You know, I got time for a project. You know, and right. you take you take a look at this and they go, why did I put this here? You know, let me go check it out again. And who knows, a project can spring from this. You never know. Yeah, and to be honest, that's what I hope. I hope somebody figures out, wait, we can use this as a great back end for our tool. We know how to make Google, I mean, sorry, looking for Google. We know how to make user interfaces. It's this back end thing we don't understand. Yeah, that, that, that would definitely be nice. Uh, Mike, honestly, dude, I, want, I ain't going to lie. I want to have you on again so we can talk some more about some more things in this. <laughs> On this site, because this is a this is such a cool site, man. Wow, it's ten o'clock already. I didn't even realize it. I was worried we wouldn't have enough uh, information to cover. Oh no, I can blabber on for a long time, like you know. <laughs> Um, but I mean, seriously, Mike, if you have anything you would like to announce to the Podnuts universe, mm -hmm. please don't hesitate. Shoot us an email. I'll be more than happy to append the beginning or the end of the show about there's a new thing over at gegeek.com or there's or, or there's a a um a uh, a uh, announcement of um any kind okay i appreciate um, that thank you no problem and i will say uh if there's a way to if people want to contact you they can from gegeek.com correct yeah on on my homepage there's uh submit or report a broken link that's that's the ge geek email up there Gotcha. Very cool, Mike. Um, seriously, uh, if there's ever a way that Podnuts can help you in the future, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, I'll be more than happy to help. Is there any uh, parting words that you want to uh, share? Uh, I'm blown away by the attention and all the compliments. I, I'm really, I'm really surprised by it, and I'm, I'm glad that my my envision in my head that OCD vision I put on paper is, is being accepted. <laughs> very cool. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, and I want to okay. thank everybody for downloading. Thank everybody for sub for sub subscribing to the cast. Uh, and I'll ask everybody, if there's a little bit of time in your day and if you're on a Windows computer, can you please open up I, I, iTunes, click on podcast, search for Podnuts, and uh, find it in your heart to give us a review or a rating. That helps Podnuts as a network greatly. I'll also ask people if you um, are on Amazon.com and you see something really cool that you would like to get, go to podnuts.com slash Amazon. You'll be redirected back to the Amazon homepage. You can go buy your item. It will cost you no more money whatsoever. And Podnuts gets a small percentage, a very, very small per uh, a, a, a percentage. Every little bit helps to run this network. Every little bit we get from that, we do not have to accept advertising from companies that we do not want to help advertise. Um, I want to thank everybody for helping us, supporting us, and downloading us, and I will talk to everybody soon. Okay, go ahead and click stop. I will stop the...